Out this now. conference will uh, now be I'm recorded. Right, there we go. Um, and the link for this webinar will be made available after the session. I believe in terms of settings, we have turned off the webcam access feature for guests here. So in case you're at home in pajamas and eating cereal while listening to this, no problem at all. No one will know. <laughs> um, through the session, if you have any questions at all, please, uh, please feel free to leave them in the chat below. The default setting is to the entire audience, which can be helpful so others can add or questions. But if you would like to send one to just the Media Cloud team here, um, you can also choose the only to organize a preference. So we'll be going over questions at the end. I assume that if you're here, you're interested and are familiar with Media Cloud. But for those who are entirely new to us, first off, a big welcome. Uh, second, a little bit about Media Cloud. So Media Cloud is an open source news analysis platform, a project that was started by the MIT Media Lab and the Berkman Klein Center at Harvard. Uh, Media Cloud is a database of over 50,000 news sources from around the world uh, in over 20 languages. In addition to being a database, we have three very helpful tools that let you analyze the vast amount of data for any news topic you may be interested in uh, across media attention, media influence, uh, and framing or language around the presentation of the news. Whether it's something like how the US news is talking about gun violence, how national versus local newspapers in the UK are presenting the many complications of Brexit, or how India's print versus digital news outlets are talking about the recent Indian elections. If you go onto our website, mediacloud.org, and I will begin uh, kind of sharing my screen now in case you want to follow along here. Um, so, there we go. You should be able to see the Media Cloud website that I have up here. Um, once you're on the landing page of our website, you can see the three tools that we have. The first of these is Explorer. Explorer is, um, is, an, is a tool that lets you search your topic of interest and get immediate results of what's in our database. The second tool that we have is Topic Mapper. Topic Mapper is a more in-depth tool that gives you results in anywhere between a few hours to a few days by scanning not just our database, but also the wider web. And the third tool that we have as you scroll to the bottom, which you can see, is Source Manager. Now, Source Manager allows you to navigate through our 50,000 plus sources. And this is where our sources are curated and categorized into collections. We organize individual sources into collections using different metrics. So it could be by national uh, you know, or state or local level at a country. It could be by language, by media type, by a, you know, a set of sources that's most read or popular in a news ecosystem or even by topic focus. Uh, if you need a particular media source for your research and you don't see it here, feel free to send it to us as a suggestion via the suggest a source feature on Source Manager. So in the past, we have also done a webinar on our Explorer tool, which is available on the support tab of the website. So if you just scroll back up here, you can kind of see the support tab right there. Clicking on that gives you access to the webinar link for Explorer. Um, and under support, you will also find a quick and easy to read get started page guide that walks you through creating an account on Media Cloud and getting started with the tools. Our focus for today's webinar is the second tool I mentioned, Topic Mapper. It's a really fantastic tool uh, that lets you do a deep dive into your topic of interest. And our wonderful tech team who introduced themselves earlier has recently made some really useful updates to it. So I'm going to spend the next 30 to 40 minutes on the tool, uh, after which my colleague Ashka will go over some FAQs about the tool, and then my other colleagues, Emily and Cindy, uh, who are from the research and tech team respectively, will field questions about both sides of the tool in the last 15 minutes. Great, so let's jump right in. Um, for best viewing experience of this webinar, we recommend you use the full screen option uh, so that you can see all the features closely. Now, in order to get to the Topic Mapper tool, all you need to do on our website is go back down to the Topic Mapper you know, information uh, widget and click on the Launch Now button. This should open Topic Mapper's interface, which is just topics.mediacloud.org into a separate tab. 
Now, um, what you will see when you get to, when you kind of get to this page uh, is that you see our three tools on the top. You see a description for the tool that you're currently on and kind of a link to access a user guide about it. Now you will see right below this is an option to search for a topic. You can also create a new topic right here. Uh, you have your personal or start topics uh, and then you have a set of public topics. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the public topics. The personal topic of mine that you saw was a climate change one designed for this webinar, which I will come back to. But if you go through the public topics here, you see a whole host of topics created by other people. And the reason that these are visible to everyone here is because they've been marked as public and so available for others to see. Now I'm going to stay on this page for a while. And before I get more into Topic Mapper itself, I'm going to take a moment and explain to you what a topic is. So now to gather data about your issue of interest, what Media Cloud lets you do in our, in our Explorer tool, which as I mentioned was our instant search tool, um, is enter a set of search keywords that reflect your issue of interest. So example, Brexit. You then pick a news source or a news collection. Let's say here you pick the UK National Collection. In our UK National Collection, we have about 92 sources in it. And then you pick a set of dates. Let's say again, the last one week. And you go ahead and hit the search button once you've entered these parameters. The system will give you back maybe, you know, a thousand stories and an analysis of those thousand stories for your search. So great, you've got an instant result of everything that's in our database from these 92 sources in the UK collection. But what if you want more than what's in our database? What if you want to explore the wider web and want a wider set of stories relevant to the search? That's where Topic Mapper comes in. So you can recreate the exact search in Topic Mapper, and that's called building a topic. And when you hit the enter button there, the system will take those 1000 stories from Explorer, which were already in our database as a starting point. And it'll look for every hyperlink within those stories and open it out to see if it contains the same parameter of your search, i.e. the term Brexit, and if it's from the last one week. And if that's true, then it will add that story to your existing list of stories. Now it'll open the hyperlinks in the second set of freshly added stories and repeat the exact same process. It'll keep doing this for 15 rounds and each of these rounds is called a round of spidering. So after these 15 rounds, it has truly covered an extensive search on the internet. Um, and at the end of this entire process, it will take all those newly added stories, the original thousand, you know, plus the ones that have, have now come in through the search, uh, and that will form the database for your topic. Topic Mapper will further analyze the data in this across, again, influence, attention, language, uh, mentioned entities, and present this analysis, analysis to you in the interface. So that's the whole and sum of your topic. So all these topics that you see here currently on this public page are what different media cloud users have run based on their area of interest. So let's start by trying to create a new topic so that you know what the process looks like as in when you want to do it for your own research. And then let's come back to the pre-run climate change topic that you saw under my personal topics so that we can see what the results and analysis actually looks like. So I'm going to go ahead here and click on the create a new topic button. It's just on the top bar there. Now on the topic creation page, uh, let's try and you know, create a topic about a recent news event. So there were two that we thought of, uh, which were two big sets of elections that happened recently. One was the Australian, ele Australian election, which happened on the 18th of May. And the other was the Indian election, which was over five weeks in April and May. So we could try either of those two. I'm going to go ahead and try the latter because I'm more familiar with that topic, which is something as you create a topic that's really helpful to have. A background of the issue will help you pick the relevant search words and understand the results of your data as well. So here I'm going to put in a topic name. I'm going to call it Indian Gender Elections 2019. 
below that it asked me for a description of the topic so i'm gonna say topic about india's general elections now it's asking me for a start date and an end date for this search so what i'm gonna do is uh, i'm gonna look for all of the stories that were published after the results of the indian election so the results were announced on 23rd may 2019 I'm going to go ahead and change that and the end date I'm going to leave as the most recent date. Now my seed query, um, I could use the word elect for ex election, for example, as one. Um, I could also use elections with that. Now when you put an or connector between the two, it will look for stories with either or of these terms. Now we have a, a, a guide on our website that lets you build queries and you'll see in that guide and one of the suggestions is instead of using something like election or elections, you could go back and put an asterisk after election. So that will include both election and any other extension of the word, i.e. in this case elections as well. I'm also going to add another couple of keywords to this. One is the word Modi. That's the name of the current prime minister who went on to win this election as well. And then I'm also going to add the name of the opposition leader. So between these three, we should hopefully cover a good extent, a good amount of uh, the coverage around the Indian elections. If you look under advanced settings, you can change the number of spidering rounds that you would like. So there's 15 possible rounds that you can do, but you can reduce the number in case you decide that you want to have a shorter number of spidering rounds. Um, below that, there's a pick media option. Now this takes you to our feature that lets you pick different sources from our source manager tool. Um, so you'll see here that we have sources marked as starred or featured. Uh, featured are ones that we would like to surface either because they're frequently used or because they give an idea of the kind of collections we have. So if I click on featured here, you can see top online US news sources. Um, you can see left, center left, center, center right and right. These are a set of partisan news collections from the US that we created based on a study we did of the elections in 2016. Um, now I'm looking for the India National Collection. Now I can choose that from the India National source here that's listed under Featured Collections, or I could also go into Search Geographic Collections, type India, and then wait for that to come up. So India National comes up right here. As you can see, we also have India State and Local, and we have a list of different news sources from various Indian states. So I'm going to pick the India National Collection right there. It appears under my selected media on the left. I say OK, and it's now added in. So now that we've entered the parameters of our topic and the seed query details, we can go ahead and hit Preview. Now Preview takes you to a page that shows you the number of stories uh, in your initial search. So that's 21,245. The limit in Topic Mapper is 100,000 stories. So we're well below that limit, so we're good. If you find that you've either crossed 100,000 or are very close to that, you can go back and either narrow your search further by changing the query words, or you could um, reduce the time duration that you're searching or change the sources that you're looking in. Uh, this is telling me kind of how the attention of the stories changed over time since the 23rd to the 29th. That looks about right since the most number of stories should be around the 23rd when they were announced, when the results were announced. And the top words here tell you the most frequently used words within these stories. Now it's a good idea to look over these and to see whether they really do match the query that you were trying to create. Now in my case it does. It tells me all about the different elections. So I think we're good to go ahead to the next step. Now the next step here says validate some stories. Topic Mapper offers you 30 random stories from the search that you've created. Now this is because sometimes your search terms can also give you irrelevant results. For example, had I used the word elect instead of election, that may have given me stories you know, in a different context about that use the word elect. Um, so what we can do here is go ahead and click yes or no to all the stories that are relevant and to the stories that are not. So in the interest of time, I am going to go ahead and click yes for all of these. 
Um, there is, we recommend that at least 90% of your stories are relevant. While the tool will not stop you from going ahead and running your topic, if you find that more than 10% of your stories are not relevant, it's a good idea to go back and look at your seed query and see whether that could be those those words could be used in a different context. So now we say review and confirm. It tells me my search terms, the dates, the collections I'm using, everything looks good. And I say create topic. All right. Great. So it says that our topic is now running uh, and it's going ahead and kind of collecting the data for it. Um, our tech team told us yesterday that uh, they're searching for the right cat gifs to display at each stage. I believe the order is a sleeping cat uh, for once your topic has been created, a waking up cat for once it's queued, a cat chasing a mouse for when the topic is running, and then a happy curled up cat at the end of the day once your topic is completed. So keep a lookout for that soon to come feature. All right, now because this topic will take a few hours or a day or so to run, we won't be able to see the results over this webinar. What we can do, however, is go through the results of the pre-created topic on climate change. So let's go back to home here. And click on the climate change topic that appears. So as you see, we now run this Indian general elections topic and it's now appeared here. It says the topic is running. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the climate change topic. Now this topic looks at climate change across the US and UK news from April, 2018 to April, 2019. All right, so now this is what your topic interface finally will look like. Right on the top here, you see your topic name and the description right below that. You can ignore the version three for now. I'm gonna come back and explain that uh, as we go through the different features of the topic. Now, just below that bar, uh, again, is a set of buttons that I'm gonna come back and explain once we've gone through the, the main data within this. Now, below this, you see a time span of your data. This entire topic and all the features on the different page that you see are extremely interactive. So you can keep slicing and dicing the data and the, and the analysis in the way you want. So here you could look at your results by month. If I click monthly, if I can switch between the different months. I can look at it weekly. So same way I can toggle between different weeks or I could do a custom search. I'm gonna go back to overall for now. Now, these four boxes below, these are the overall data summary of the topic. So this topic has 92,401 stories that have come from 7,253 media sources. They have 75, almost 76,000 story links. Now what we mean by story links is how many times stories in this set link to each other. And 30,000 odd media links is how many times different media sources in this set link to each other. So if you remember when we explained the slide ring process, um, it was about tracking the links between the different stories. So this kind of gives you an indication of that data. Now at this time, um, a natural question to ask is, okay, so there's you know this number of stories here, but what actual search terms do you use for this? The results could change drastically depending on the exact keywords. So to see what keywords we used, we can click on this button here called stats. Now these are different analysis analysis that our system um, ran, as you will see when we explore the rest of the tabs. But it's telling you that 99% of the stories are in English, that the 10 about 10% of all the stories were undateable. That's for various technical reasons. Our system was not able to pick up the exact date that a story was published on. Um, but where that's a good stat to have it at just 10%, and that 99% of the stories were checked for entities and checked for themes. Again, these are two features of analysis that I'll explain more as we get into it. 
Same thing for the subtopics. I'm going to come back to that. Now, when you come to this box at the bottom, this tells you the parameters that were used for your seed query. So you've got the search terms, climate change, climate crisis, or global warming. You've got the dates as 1st April 2018 to 1st uh, April 2019. And you've got two collections here, the US Top Online News 2017. Now, just to clarify, this collection was curated by using the top rated online sources based on their traffic by Pew in 2017, but they are the most up-to-date sources. And then the UK National Collection, which has all of the print digital broadcast news of the UK uh, used across uh, nationally in the country. So now let's go back to exploring the rest of the analysis tabs. The first one that we have here is influence. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now here you see a sample of all the stories that we have in this topic. There's the story title, the media outlet that published it, the date it was published, media in links is how many media sources linked to it, um, and how many media sources the story linked to uh, is outlinks. Facebook shares is the total number of shares received by that story. So while we don't focus on social media primarily within Media Cloud, we do have Facebook share numbers for all stories within a topic. Now, as you can see, um, these are all ordered by media in links. Again, sorry, just a quick note. Anything that says subtopics, we're going to leave out for now, since that's something we'll come to towards the end. And it'll make sense why these are subtopics appear everywhere. Um, so now, as you see, we have these ordered by media in links, and hence they're titled top stories. So it's taking the most influential stories here to mean what's been linked to the most. All of these definitions are under the learn more tab on the left. Um, now, here the top story is the website IPCC, which is the UN body for assessing science around climate change. So often credible sites with data or statistics in them turn up as the most cited source. Um, as many different other news outlets are linking to the numbers on that. Now, arguably, the number of citations a story receives is not a standard definition and could change depending on your research question. So what you can do is download the CSV of all the stories. So if you just go down to the end of the widget there, sorry, you see a download option, and that lets you download all the stories. So if you wanted a you know, kind of quicker download, given the amount of data in this, you could also just ask for the top 2,000 stories. There's also an option to download the data with the Facebook collection date, since if you download it on a certain date, um, you know, the Facebook number of shares could change after that. So this tells you exactly on what date those shares were collected. And then download CSV of all story links, which, as I mentioned, is the linkages between the different stories in this set. Um, so you could then download that CSV and order it by, you know, Facebook shares, for example, if you, if for your research question, that's a, that's a metric of influence. Now, one caveat to surface here is that we don't release the actual story text since that's a copyright issue, but we do give you a full list of the story URLs. Um, now, all of the analysis features across Media Cloud have this download option and not just this particular one. So below the top stories, we have top media. Um, now, which is the same logic, but media sources ordered by the most linked to. Now, the, the thing with both these features is that you can click on an individual media source or story and it will take you to a page with details about each. In the interest of time, I'm going to skip that, but feel free to explore it uh, you know, when you are going to Topic Mapper. It kind of gives you data about that stories in terms of which were the exact stories that linked to that particular one, uh, what are the most frequently used words used by one particular media outlet in talking about this issue, um, the top themes, the top entities within that. And if we scroll down here, this is the last feature. Uh, this is the raw file. You can download a raw file here to create a word map. Now, this can be generated in a free-to-use software called Gephi, um, and it allows you to visually see which source is linked to who, or how different sources using similar words in their stories might link to each other. So that's the overall under the influence analysis 
of Topic Mapper. I'm going to scroll back up here to our tabs and move on to the next one, which is Attention. All right. So under Attention over time, uh, this shows the number of stories published per day, and that changes and then shows us how that changes over the time period selected. So this is really helpful in seeing peaks. So for example, here, it's very clear that we have, you know, one major peak. Um, now you can select the time period to see that date more closely. So I could do this and it lets me see what that date is. So it tells me it's December 4th, 2018. So when we, you know, when we looked up kind of what happened around that time, so it was the time of the UN climate change conference. And typically there's a lot of news conversation generated around such an event. So that's probably what we owe the peak to. Now you could view this chart by day as it is right now or by week or by month as well. And again, you could download that here. All right, so we can move on to our third tab of analysis, which is language. Now language here indicates the vocabulary or the framing of conversations within this topic. So the first feature right on top here has a word cloud which shows the most frequently used words ordered by size. Now this is sampled out of a thousand stories, but for greater accuracy, you could select it out of 10,000 stories. So right here under change sample size, you could do that. It would take a slightly long, it would take a little bit longer, but you have that option. And you could also change the layout to a regular word cloud layout. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And that's what a regular word cloud layout looks like. You can download the data here in a CSV. Uh, you could also download a CSV of the bigram or trigram frequency, which is two or three words uh, used together most frequently. And you could also download an image of this word cloud. So the next feature we have under language is topic word space, uh, topic word space model. What this tells you is the different sub conversations happening in this topic. So words are used within one. So words that are used within one slide have a high um, one slice right here um, have a high probability of being used in the same context. And the bigger and darker a word, the more frequently it's used, similar to the word cloud. So for example, let's say we look at this slice. Now you see funding institute emissions republic in this in this slice. Now that could indicate a certain sub conversation, you know, maybe something to do around carbon tax. So it's a good idea to be able to then dive more into what these sub conversations could be signaling. This feature was created using a word to vec model uh, and you can read more about the exact kind of data and technology behind this in the blog post that's linked right here on the left. And finally, below that, we have the top themes within this conversation. Now, this is one of my favorite features because it can often be quite insightful. Um, so these themes are auto-generated based on a model we created using an existing library of New York Times articles that were coded for various themes. Again, you can read more about the method here under learn more on the left. But what we see here is that the top five topics are global warming, environment, politics and government, weather and air pollution. So while the first, first four are kind of predictable and you know you're likely to have them in there, air pollution is interesting to see because it tells you that maybe you know air pollution is spoken about more than something like water pollution. So those are the kind of features we have under language. All of these have downloadable CSVs that let you dig more into them. Our last analysis tab here is entities. So Entities uses the Stanford NLP library and our Cliff Clavin engine. Uh, it identifies the most mentioned people, organizations, and countries. So kind of if you look under the most mentioned people here, you see Donald Trump and Obama pretty up there. And the reason you see their names twice is because the library see them sometimes mentioned just by their last name or sometimes the full name. So they identify them as two different entities. And you also see someone like Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez listed there, probably because of the you know, conversation she's been generating around the Green New Deal. 
Similarly, if you go down to top 10 organizations, you see the Congress, the IPCC, the EPA. Um, and so these two features can be super helpful in getting an idea of some of the most mentioned entities. And the last widget here is geographic attention or the most mentioned countries. So this tells you, for example, we see that the US and the UK you know, are slightly darker green there. Um, and that's expected since we've selected the US and UK sources. But we also see Brazil, Russia, China, India, and Australia, because they're important parts of the important countries in the global warming conversation. So with this, we've covered the different tabs of analysis under Topic Mapper. Now, I want to come back to our summary page here. And I want to come back to the top bar and go through some of these buttons right here. So the, the kind of landing page that you're on is a summary page, as I just mentioned. Um, if you click on the settings, if you click on the settings page, you can change the name and the description of the topic. You can also make it public if you want other people to be able to see it. If you click on permissions, you can add different people who you'd like to maybe collaborate with this topic on without making it public. So that's, for, that's a use, useful way to work with other researchers on this. Um, and so now if you kind of come back to versions here, and this is the last section of our, of kind of the main things I'd like to go through on Topic Mapper. And in some ways the most important for researchers using this tool. So versions gives you the ability to slice and dice your topic into different subtopics. So that's the feature I mentioned a couple of times that you know was, was visible in different places and that I would come back to. Now each time I slice and dice my topic up, the system prompts me to generate a new version of the topic. So this is so, so that you can have your data frozen in one version, which is an important requirement in academic research, especially if you change the original seed uh, query or the dates of your original search. So it's almost like we keep this data in a vault for you. Now I have sliced and diced uh, this topic in different ways and at three different times, which is why you can see three versions here. Uh, we have so far been using the latest version, which the system automatically defaults to, but we can go back to a previous version and it'll prompt me that I am on an older version. Uh, so for example, if I click, you know, use version one here, It takes me to this previous version, but it does prompt me and say that, hey, you're not using the latest version, switch versions. So then I can come back to this page and select my most recent version. Now this feature used to be called snapshot, but we noticed users using a, um, you know, a better term, which was versions. So we decided to co-opt that descriptor into the system itself. So now let's look at the different ways that you can slice and dice your topic, right? So you can click generate a new version here, oh, sorry, create a new version. Ah, all right, since we've, we're currently running another topic, uh, we're not going to be able to add or change subtopics at this time. But what I will do is go back and kind of show you the different subtopics I have already created that will allow us to get a sense of all the different features that we have in our ability to slice and dice topics. So if we click on this little filter button here, you see subtopic and story filter. So story filter is a way to kind of, without running a whole, whole new topic, look at how certain conversations within this topic are being discussed. So for example, if I wanted to look at something like Green New Deal, I could insert that here, click enter, and it shows up right here as something that I'm trying to look at a subtopic within. And it will now refresh my data based on the search. So now it's telling me these are the most, these are the top stories based on my search for Green New Deal. And similarly, all the rest of the data will also change accordingly. So if I want to get rid of that, I can just click the cancel button here and then we're back to our original. So that is if you want to run 
you know, a search to slice and dice something by a uh, particular term without running a whole new version. But if you do want to run a new version, which lets you, you know, explore many different ways to slice and dice and not just by a particular keyword, you can do it across a few different things, which the subtopics have already created uh, show off. So, so we have, um, so I've created two subtopics that are by language. Um, so I looked at the Green New Deal and I also looked at words reflecting climate change reality. So if I click on that, and if I go to stats here, I can see I can get an idea of some of the data under this particular subtopic. So if I go to influence, if I go to attention, again, this data would have changed based on this subtopic. Now, similarly, I could create a subtopic with these particular keywords as I mentioned, but I can also create subtopics based on the retweet partisanship that I mentioned earlier. So I can see how the left versus the right versus the center left versus the center right talks about climate change. And that's really interesting, especially in an ecosystem like the US media, where it's kind of quite a politicized topic. Um, I can also slice and dice my topics by particular sources and particular collections. So I have a UK collection only or a US collection only that I can do it by. Um, I can also do it by themes and countries. So the system lets you pick an option where you can break the topic down by the top five, 10 or 15 themes. So here I've selected the top 10 themes. And as you can see, air pollution, energy and power, environment, finances, and so forth. So you could click on any of these and look at how the US and UK are talking about air pollution. And you can compare that with something like um, you know, energy and power. You can also do the same, as I mentioned, by top countries. So here I ran a subtopic using the top five countries mentioned. Um, and you could get an idea of how the US and UK are talking about global warming in Canada versus global warming in France, for example. So those are, those are the examples of the different subtopics that you can run. Uh, you, there's also one more type of subtopic that you could run, which is by media type. So all our sources are categorized by print, digital, or broadcast. So you could compare how these different uh, media types are talking about the same issue. So with that, uh, I think we've covered almost everything we need to on Topic Mapper. Hopefully this was not too much information to throw at you. Um, and if there's any other pending questions, please feel free to kind of put it in the chat. Um, and if not, as I mentioned at the start, this recording will be available online for anyone who wants to access it later. You could check out our support page, again, as I mentioned on the website, or the blogs or the case studies on there for research examples. But thank you so much for listening. And I'm now going to hand over to my colleague Ashka for the next few minutes, who is going to go over some of the FAQs. And after that, Emily and Cindy will be fielding questions that you may have. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashka, and I'll be doing a bit of the FAQ questions today. These are questions that we get pretty often in relation to topic mappers, so we wanted to pull aside a little bit of time to talk about those questions specifically, and then we'll open it up for a larger Q&A. Um, the first question, the one we get the most often, is how long will my topic take to run? And, and the answer is that, that this depends on your topic. If it's a point of coverage that's been covered a lot in the media, it can take a little longer. However, generally your topic will run within 48 hours. The second thing that we wanted to flag was how to know if a topic is broken. If your topic is broken, you will see a red-orange error message on your topic, either on the page showing you all of the topics you've created or in your version interface where there will be a nice flag that's a red orange color showing you that your topic is broken at that point you can troubleshoot what the error message is telling you or you can always reach out to us using our support information the question that follows is how can i update my data so it is more current 
If you want to update your data, the best thing to do is rerun your, the topic so that the spider incorporates the new dates. And then the question after that is, how can I cancel a topic so I can start a new one? You can't actually cancel a topic, but you can slice and dice your topic using both the subtopics and versions feature. And lastly, the question that we want to close the FAQ section out with is, do we have social media data? Topic Mapper does incorporate Facebook data, but it does not incorporate Twitter data. We are currently working on a Reddit integration, so that's also something that you can look forward to down the pipeline. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Emily Indulu for the open Q&A section. Great, thank you, Roshka. Um, we shared those as the questions that we see the most coming through on our support emails, but we are gonna be happy to field just open questions from you now. Uh, because there's so many attendees, we are gonna ask that you put them in the chat box instead of uh, saying them vocally over the line. So we'll just start with our first one. Okay, um, so we have Ryan saying he's a funder of journalism, interested in understanding the ripple effects of stories which have been published through certain grants. Is there a way through Media Cloud Spidering to track the ripple effects of specific sets of stories or follow up on coverage, e.g. showing all the stories in the top 100 US online sources linking to a specific set of URLs? So Ryan, if we're understanding your question correctly, you are able to create a topic using keywords that would grab the stories that you're referencing, the ones that connect back directly to your grant funding. And then you could see for any stories that are related, matching those keywords, the hyperlinks that from other media sources that link back to that story. So you could get a sense of how influential it was in the media ecosystem. Um, you wouldn't necessarily be able to see all the hyperlinks from the entire internet if the topic itself didn't match. If, for example, if there was a story about, your story was about global warming, and then there was a story about um, a political process, but it didn't contain the global warming keywords, but did have a link back to your story, we wouldn't capture that because it's focused on stories that match the keywords. Um, but this is something that I think there are processes within our tool that we could uh, attempt to work with you on and that we should contact and follow up with you after on some strategies that might work. The next question, a um, bit more explanation please about A, how to read the original sources and B, how do you deal with copyright issues? So due to copyright, that's why we can't show the raw text of articles to users. Um, there is an option to follow the link out to the story, and then you will just be able to see whatever you as an internet user would be able to see in whatever country you're in and whatever subscriptions you may have. Our system can use the HTML from the RSS feeds, which is how we collect many of our stories, to parse the um, text and do the analysis, but we can't show you back that raw text. Should we, anything else to add from the group on copyright issue? Okay. Uh, the next question, how, can you splice the data to look at individual sources to compare language used by different outlets? Um, can we splice the data? I guess, Kyle, I would be curious to know if um, you want to do that through the CSV data uh, that you can download, or would you want to just uh, be able to visualize that through the, uh, the, through the source manager? And the answer to that is um, we don't provide the ability. It, it really depends on which sources and how you want to look at that language in particular. Yeah, I'll chime in. This is Rahul here. You can, um, if you noticed, is I think we're still sharing the screen. Um, oh, we're not. Okay. Well, in that filter bar that you saw within a topic, there is a way. Not only if you click on a media source within a topic, you can see a, a very similar summary of the language they're using and the same metrics for top stories within that source. And then you could just open another window and compare it to a different source within your topic. So uh, within Topic Manager, you can do the similar types of analysis to what you saw within, very easily within a media source for a specific story um, or even for a specific word, a particular term that you're interested in. Uh, and there's also a way to filter in on a set of stories very quickly 
um, with the story filter where you can search for stories that mention a particular language. So uh, you can do that by digging into a media source within a topic mapper. Thank you. Our next question is, suggestion for new sources can only be done one by one, question, or is there a way to bulk suggest a given set of sources? So you can do a bulk suggest. Um, we One of the things we'll send out after this webinar in a follow-up email would be a link to that spreadsheet. It's a CSV that has predefined categories for you, like the URL of the source, some metadata if you can fill it in, like the state and the country that it's published in, the language it's published in. And then we have someone who manages our sources and we'll just double check that we don't already have it and that it's a valid source, and then we can upload it in bulk. Any other questions? This would also be a chance if you have not necessarily a specific question, but you'd like to see a function, uh, you'd like to go back in and look at language again or something, we could do that. Uh, here's one. Interesting on a certain topic. Would I use the subtopic? Necessarily need to make a subtopic that might be where the story search filter would be a quicker and easier approach for you so you could type their name in quotes into the story search filter and find within that overall coverage what uh, discussion is taking place that includes their name you could also use the top entities widget and download the CSV for a larger list of people and you could see where they fall in that list and that might be something of interest to do over time and see if they've gotten more or less mentioned um, the question, I think the uh, the re responder couldn't hear what you oh. said, so maybe we could we could follow up with okay, with Laura. And there's another question here. Um, Laura, I just in the interest of time, I'm gonna. Uh, I believe you and I have connected previously on email, so I'm gonna email that answer to you. Just since the other folks did see it, and we have a couple other questions, but don't worry, we promise to get back to you on that. Okay, I have another question here. In prior topic mapping runs, I noted that articles were being pulled outside the intended query source. Um, that's because that's the actual intention of it is to go beyond the, outs the sources that we already have and to look at the wider internet picture. Um, if you only want the media sources, you could use Explorer, our other tool, or you could set spidering to zero and that would only give you sources from uh, pardon me, stories from the media sources that we have. Um, I did want to note, it, to note that uh, during the topic creation, for those people who um, keying off the iteration question, um, in topic creation, you can choose your max iterations to be zero through 15. Mm -hmm. So you do have some control as a topic creator um, to be able to, to minimize your spidering. Mm -hmm. That and also help address the question how long it takes to spider, right? So if you have less iterations, it'll take less time. Absolutely. And if your research question really is only on what does the media say or what do they directly link to, that's a helpful way to limit that number of spidering to one or zero. Okay. Just making sure we haven't missed any in the chat here. Simple question, I've tried to make a query on a topic, but it was already made by another user. When I open this topic created by another user, is it possible to review the pre precise query he or she did and how? On the, public on the stats page? page? Yes, so that is possible and we can show you now. Should be seeing it now. So I'm gonna go back to the home page in Explorer. And I'll go into the public topics, which you saw before, and we'll just choose one. Um, I happen to make this one, so we'll choose it. Hopefully it will load while we're all still on the webinar. <laughs> um, 
I will start telling you what it is just in case we run into a, a long load situation here. You can click on to that stats tab, which Anushka showed you. Oh, here we go. Last one. And we can go to the bottom and we can see there the information with the search terms, the dates, and the media source that they searched into. So that's something that is available to you. Um, viewing a public topic is not the best way to, to do a research project or approach because there's so many things that you might want to change or tweak. Uh, it's certainly a good way to get an idea of preliminary results someone else might have had and jumping off point. But we don't often recommend that you rely on someone else's pre-existing topic to accomplish a research goal of your own. Okay, we're going to go back to the chat. All right. Great, so I think if there's no more questions, we might use the last five minutes to just go back to one of the things that we were trying to show earlier about um, you know, creating subtopics. We were not able to create it earlier um, as we had a new topic already running. So what we've done in the meanwhile is that we've just switched the user that we were showing this through. So I'm gonna go ahead and share this screen again. Great, so hopefully you should be able to see the climate change topic once again on this. Um, and now if we go back to the versions tab that we were discussing as a way to create a new subtopic, now you can go here and say create a new version, and this is the two different options that you have. So you could change the initial C, your search terms, your date, or your news collection, or you could add or modify subtopics to this. So we're gonna pick add or modify subtopics here. And here you have a list of all the different subtopics that I had created before that we've already gone through. So I'm gonna go to the bottom here, and it gives you an option that says add a new subtopic. So you can go ahead and hit that, and now you can see the five different ways or five different techniques that let you create a subtopic that I mentioned earlier. So the first is a keyword search. So you can look within your existing topic for a specific term. US audience partisanship, that's the five different media collections that I mentioned from left to right. Top countries, which is the top countries mentioned within this topic. Top themes, that's top themes mentioned within this topic. And media type, like I said, by you know, broadcast, uh, digital, or print. So let's say here we do media type, since that's the only one I think we did not run um, on the existing subtopics. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And this should load to give you a simple form to enter the name of the subtopic. Now subtopics can also be categorized into mm -hmm. sets. If you decide you kind of wanna, you know, make a series of different language queried subtopics. You could call that, you know, you could name that based on, on the specific research subtopic that you're trying to create. Now, this tells you here, it gives you a preview of your subtopic, I'm sorry. So this page turns up before your form page to put the name and the description of the subtopic. And this tells you the number of stories within the subtopic as a whole of the topic. And it gives you the number of stories which within each of these categories. So you've got broadcast, uh, print, digital native, and other is sources that have not been labeled or have been categorized as other. Now this is where you'd put in the name. So we can go ahead and call this media type. You can give it a description. These will be autofilled to make it easier, but you can change them. So we're gonna go ahead with the autofilled name and description. And now it asks you to confirm whether this is what you want. So yep, we want the media type technique. We want to create five subtopics. So I say save and add more. And now as this processes, it should basically prompt you once you've created the subtopic to generate a new version. So as I mentioned before, this is so that your previous versions are not uh, altered and that you can have that data frozen in time. So you get a little notification here that says we created a new subtopic with media type tags. And as 
meant it's uh, as, as prompted it says that you've created a new subtopic so you need to generate a new version so you can review the changes here which tells you what you initially had and what you've now added so if you see the difference in this box and this box is the media type and that's the subtopic that we've added so we say great generate new version and that's where you have that it started generating the latest version and so now you see that we had three versions earlier and now you have the fourth version that's running and it's generating so great so i think that sums up our entire topic mapper webinar i think we've covered everything um thank you for a great set of questions and thank you everyone for listening so much we'll be following up with a link to this webinar um and a couple of the follow-up links that we mentioned through through the webinar all right thank you so much have a nice day everyone Bye. Bye.